Hey everybody, we've completed 10 episodes of the series on modeling 3D scenes using raymarching technology, so it's probably time to try something a bit simpler again. The shader you are looking at right now looks quite nice and usable, and it's not too complicated to program. Let's dive in. I won't waste time with a long introduction and will jump straight into the work. Let's create a new scene, add a color rack to it and assign it a new shader material, just the usual process. So right click on the scenes folder, create new scene and let's make it user interface and call it for instance Sonar. I think it is a bit similar to this kind of effect and right click add child node and color rect. Let's set the black color to it and the usual layout, the usual dimensions, which are full HD 1920 by 1080. Okay, let's just zoom out a little bit to display everything. And scrolling down to the material section, new shader material, click new shader, which is called Sonar GD shader. It's in canvas item mode and I'll put it to the shaders folder create and click again to open it in the shader editor so godot generated the basic shader code let's expand that a little bit from which we can delete everything unnecessary leaving only the fragment function so i'm deleting vertex and i'm deleting the commented out white function good so let's start with the uniform parameters this time I'll write them all at the beginning so they are ready for the code that follows. There are only five of them so it won't take much time. Let's do it here. <clears throat> Uniform Vec2 resolution with initial value our full HD uh, resolution. <laughs> so it's uh, 1920 and 1080. We will use this for the aspect ratio recalculation. What's wrong? Ah, not that. Three, back two, of course. Okay, the second one, we want to give our sonar effect some color. So, uniform back three color with a hint uh, <laughs> source color, of course. Source color. So, we get that nice color picker in the uh, inspector and the initial value back three. I think this is some shade of blue, 0 0.1, 0 0.4, 0 0.7. Very well. The third one would be the zoom factor, uniform float zoom with a hint range and the initial value I think I set to 2. And let's make the range from 0.1 to, for example, uh, for example 3 and the step point zero one okay then we want the speed of our animation uniform uh, float speed with another hint range and the initial speed would be two and let's make it from zero to for example 10 with the step point zero one okay and finally i want to define the contrast uniform float contrast with another hint range and the initial contrast is 20 uh, from 1 to for instance 50 and again the step would be 0 0.01 okay and now let's move on to the fragment function first we'll do the usual things shift the coordinates origin to the center uh, let's make it better visible to the center adjust the aspect for the aspect ratio set the zoom factor and prepare the time variable using the speed parameter this is our standard starting setup and you've probably seen it many in many other tutorials on this channel okay let's expand it again and scrolling down to fragment function and let's do it back to uv is uv minus 0.5 this is the 
uh, adjustment of the coordinate origin. So now we have it at the center of our element. Now the aspect ratio recalculation, UV X. And now it's multiplied by resolution X divided by resolution uh, Y. If we don't do that, the final effect wouldn't be circular. So this is how to make it universal for any dimensions of our uh, canvas item element. Okay, now the zoom factor, UV is simply multiplied by the zoom factor so we can zoom in and zoom out and finally the time variable float time is the internal time times speed all right now for our algorithm we know the effect is made up of circles with a certain radius so we'll need to know the distance of the current pixel from the center which we can easily get using the length function thanks to the fact that in the center the coordinates are zero zero so float r for radius is just length of the uv vector cool to display moving circles we need something like a wave that changes over time we'll add a variable called wave and for now let's just assign it the value of r float wave is simply r now let's try what happens if we take this value multiplied by the configured contrast value and then multiply it with the color from the uniform parameters that is a vector 3. The result will be another vector 3, which we'll use to display the final color of the pixel, like this. So vector 3 result is, as I said, wave times contrast times color. <clears throat> okay, and let's display it. So internal color, which is vector 4, would have our result for first three components and one for the alpha value. Wait for it. Okay, so we can see some kind of circular shapes, definitely, which makes sense because that's exactly what we expect when using the length function. However, it would be better to display a higher contrast uh, colors so we get a black background let's modify the line with the calculation where is it right here so instead of just this we will create an inverse value so one divided by this multiplication and yes that should be it great that looks better now, but nothing is moving because all the values are constant. So let's try adding the time variable to R. So float wave is R plus time. Okay, so uh, we don't see anything because the value of time is too high. So the resulting circle immediately exceeds exceeded the bounds of the image. It would be better to use a function that limits the result to a small range. How about sine? So instead of time, let's use sine of time. Okay. Very well, I think we've had it in the right direction, but we'll need more than just a sine function to achieve the desired result. I'm going to switch over to Desmos uh, with right here. Uh, for a moment, uh, it's a great online tool for visualizing function behavior and let's start experimenting. So our goal is to create a function that forms a nice wave depending on time, which we'll simulate here as a parameter. Let's start with uh, something like this. Uh, the function would be sine of x plus t where t is a parameter, so let's add a slider for it, and then we can change its value, like increase or decrease. Cool, let's make it zero for the time being now. So as we can see, we have a simple sine wave, and of course it isn't enough because we want a pulse to appear in the center of the screen, quickly grow, and then continue at slower pace toward the edges. So let's improve our formula like this. 
and I will add a sign inside the sign. Sign X. All right, that's better, but it still could be improved. We'll multiply the first X by itself and finally add another multiplication by the sign of X. So X times X. All right, and if I multiply it by another sign X, that's something that's something better, I guess. All right, so now when we adjust the value of the parameter t, we can see, let's just uh, zoom in, we can see that the graph of the function still crosses the origin, always crosses the zero. And there are pul pulsations in the values there, exactly what we are looking for. So we can rewrite the resulting formula into our shader. I'll switch back to Godot and let's improve the wave function. So it would be, I'll just get rid of that. It would be sine of R times R plus sine R plus time and the result multiplied by sine R. Wait for it. OK, we are almost there. However, it seems that the movement of circles is reversed. So instead of adding time, we'll subtract it, changing to minus. Perfect. But we still need to do one more thing. Notice that the inside of the circles alternates between black right now and a light blue color. Why? Black, light blue. This happens because the sine function ranges from negative 1 to 1, so some color values become negative. We can easily fix that by using the absolute value. So here we will just add abs. OK, we've achieved our goal. We can now play with the parameters and observe the result. So in the inspector, let's expand shader parameters. And for instance, of course, we can change the color to anything we want, but I guess I like the bluish shade the most. Now we can work with the zoom factor. Now it's very close or now it's zoom out. And of course, the speed, we can make it very, very, very fast or make it to full stop and the contrast more contrasty or less contrasty. Great. So what do you say? Shall we add support for transparent background this time as well? I think it would be worth it. Let's add one last uniform parameter. So scrolling up and uniform parameters will do this as we did in some previous tutorials. Alpha uh, threshold with a hint range and it starts at zero crap sorry okay and it goes from zero to one and the step is point zero one very well and now we'll improve the end of the fragment function so first we want the average value of our color float av g is Result R red component plus result uh, G plus sorry result B divided by three, so it's an arithmetic mean, and uh, we will use that to determine what kind of alpha value should be displayed should be used i mean so if avg is less or equal to our alpha threshold let's make it transparent otherwise let's make it opaque okay and now when i find the alpha threshold in the inspector and change it to something else we can see that we have the transparent background yes i think we can simply fine tune and find the right value to fit our needs. Great, and that's it. Thank you for watching.
I would say this kind of effect could be useful in many 2D games. For example, if you want to highlight an area the player should avoid or, on the contrary, draw their attention to something worth exploring. You could also use it to simulate a simple radar or sonar, showing approaching enemies with appropriately placed dots. There are plenty of possibilities, and of course, I'll be adding the shader to my Godot shader pack, so it's available for anyone who doesn't want to copy the code from the video. Anyway, take care, good luck with your game projects, and I'll see you in the next video.